Good afternoon, everyone. The topic of the next press briefing is presentation of the research religious occupation oppression of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Kiev and Patriarchate in Crimea. Now the floor is given to Anastasia Martinovsky, lawyer of the Ukrainian Health and Human Rights Union, and she represent, will represent all our guests today. So good afternoon, everyone. We are grateful that we, you came here today, that you joined us. Today, our speakers are um, Bishop Clement, Sergei uh, Sagan, and Sergei Zaitz. Um, so, uh, four years passed since the occupation of the uh, Crimean Peninsula, but we continue to see that the violations of human rights become. The, uh, more and more, we see more and more violations uh, hum of human rights in Crimea, and uh, also pressure on religious minorities. One of such minorities, uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Kievan Patriarchate. Um, so this problem of pressure on the UOCMKP. Uh, uh, is the um, basis for research uh, of uh, for um, human rights organization and non-governmental organization, the regional center of human rights, and the Ukrainian Helsinki group also supported this research and the regional uh, center for human rights and geo. And now we are going to present the results of our research, and I would like to give the floor to. Uh, Bishop Clement, and he is going to tell us about the situation uh, in Crimea and uh, what happened during the occupation of the peninsula. Uh, so today we present this uh, um, uh, research on the Crimea and um, uh, the uh, and this research is the result of work that we carried out uh, starting um, 2014. We had 46 uh, communities. We had uh, several brotherhood and one mo monastery. And now we have we had 25 we had 25 priests. And now we have nine premises where we have our services and these are the premises that were bought starting 20, uh, uh, 2000 and they uh, belong to Crimean patriarchy and today we have only five priests starting 2014 until 2018 we had nine priests and now five left. Uh, five left in summer due to the recent events. Searches started in Ukraine cultural center and the issue was raised about the presence of Ukrainians in Crimea who do not have Russian passports. And uh, today, Crimean uh, um, uh, Orthodox Church is now a minority, but we continue the service. And part of the priests uh, come from the mainland Ukraine for several days uh, uh, to uh, serve. Um, uh, mainly in the northern part, and uh, uh, our organization is not re-registered, uh, and this is our principal position concerning our activity in the territory of Crimea. Now, interesting aspect. In 2014 till 2018, due to support of Ukrainian Helsinki group and the, the support of the lawyer, um, Sergei Zaitsev, uh, we carry out, f uh, we filed four cases against Russian Federation, two concerning the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation, 
and two cases were filed to the court concerning the property in Sensoropol. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that the courts in Sensoropol and in Sevastopol, they accept Ukrainian documents and Ukrainian statutes that were registered in, 20, uh, in 1996 in Simferopol. They even didn't demand the translation of the statute that was printed in Ukrainian into Russian language. And in Sevastopol, they demanded this translation. And in Kaluga and in Moscow, they also demanded the translation. But the documents, they accept the documents that were issued until 2014. And uh, we also addressed uh, the uh, Supreme Court in, uh, due to uh, Deputy Zayed's. Uh, the case was filed into uh, the European Court on Human Rights in Strasbourg. So we work in this area. And the priests, uh, they serve, and people come to church, and lawyers work. So we see that important factor of persecution of uh, uh, the Ukrainian church persecution. The main is uh, uh, that they do not re-register according to Russian legislation, and uh, they have the wish to use uh, uh, the language. Also, there are some national aspects. and. Um, Bishop uh, Clement told us about uh, this, and uh, some priests left when there was the new wave of persecution based on national grounds in Crimea. And I believe that there is an important aspect. Uh, so Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Kievan Patriarchate, uh, it was the religious minority even before occupation, and Alexander Sagan is going to tell us about it. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the uh, Religious Center of Human Rights, and also I would like to thank uh, Archbishop Clement for his position. We remember that it was really difficult four years ago, and uh, I personally know uh, Archbishop uh, for a long time, and I know that for him it was really difficult to work uh, there because, uh, unfortunately, Kiev, Patriarchy, um, it was in the status of religious minority. Maybe there were no persecution, but they were not promoted in the different spheres, this is for sure. And uh, in the status of the advice of the president, I tried to solve the issue concerning allocation of land plots for the construction of churches of the uh, uh, for the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Kiev and Patriarchate. And I attended the cabinet of ministers and worked with the uh, cabinet of ministers uh, of Crimea and the speaker of the Supreme Council. And uh, there were some promises. But uh, uh, local, uh, they said that local councils and uh, uh, the Council of the Republic, uh, they were not supporting. And the decision, we didn't have positive decisions. Uh, about this land plots and our efforts, they resulted in the fact that in the territory of uh, military um, compounds, they allocated some territory where they built churches. So from one side, this was a compromise solution to construct these uh, churches. And at the same time now, this is the factor that promotes the closure of these facilities, these churches. And uh, uh, they uh, are closed for uh, people. Uh, some of them are closed for people now. So the status of uh, the minority concerning Ukrainian Orthodox Church, given Patrick, um, 
So first, uh, these, this is the presence of newly built uh, churches and their number. Uh, they had 12 uh, churches there. Maybe you can correct me. Yes, maybe there were 12 uh, churches. Uh, these were the premises, especially uh, refurbished for the services. And uh, uh, one more aspect, uh, the opportunity to freely get land plots in order to build um, churches. And this issue was not resolved. And one more aspect uh, that shows uh, the status uh, of the church as the minority. Um, um, this is the representation of the church in the media. The majority of the media, they uh, provided critical view on the activity of uh, the church of uh, Kievan Patriarchate. And uh, unfortunately, even in times of Yushchenko rule, uh, there was no proper promotion of this church. And uh, further, we may see that this is one, uh, uh, the structure that didn't support the occupation and didn't recognize uh, the new authority, and they didn't re-register. And the position of the priests concerning this issue was clear. I won't tell you about statistics in this review. We have the statistics. And uh, uh, so it is uh, 10 or 14 times this community is smaller than the uh, main uh, community. Uh, but uh, the important issue is to get the land plots and to get uh, invitations for some state uh, um, events uh, or opportunity to uh, hold some meetings. And uh, uh, these factors uh, really impeded, the uh, they created obstacles for the development of uh, um, this church in Crimea. And uh, this resulted that there are only 40, there were only 46 communities uh, of uh, um, Orthodox Church of Kievan Patriarchate and uh, uh, in Crimea, and uh, uh, we see that there are 500 uh, uh, communities of Russian Patriarchate in Crimea, and uh, this development of Russian Patriarch uh, of Ukrainian uh, Patriarchate uh, it uh, was. Uh, not well promoted, and Russian law enforcement structures and the courts, they worked against uh, this community in order to liquidate these uh, centers, uh, these communities. And uh, for people, it was impossible to have to have uh, uh, free uh, expression of their opinion, uh, and, uh, uh, the, and there was intimidation of the priests and uh, many other procedures. And the archbishop can deliberate on this uh, and tell us about why the priests leave the peninsula. And also, we may say that Russia practically today it tries to liquidate this church. Thank you. So one of important aspects in this review, these are the mechanisms due to which Russia does this. They use legal mechanisms and uh, they try to provide some legislative acts in order to make pressure on the religious community. and. We have uh, Sergei Zayets here, and he's the lawyer, the expert of Regional Center for Human Rights and Joe. Thank you. So the work that was done in this research is the result of work of a big team. First of all, lawyers. This is the experts of regional 
uh, Center for Human Rights and the uh, Helsinki uh, Group. And uh, I would like to draw your attention that this research contains some exclusive documents that are printed for the first time. And our conclusions that we propose to the attention of the community, they are grounded on facts. These are not some gossips. These are well-documented facts. So these are legal documents. and. As lawyers, we work with the legal mechanisms. First of all, speaking about overall situation in Russian Federation, honestly saying, I cannot understand how the authority is distributed. No one provides direct orders, do this, do not do that. But the, but the officials, they understand what to do, and uh, there are consequences of this. And um, the situation uh, for the Kievan Patriarchate Church uh, is such that some communities, some churches, they just disappeared because, because of indirect actions because uh, uh, they just do not want to uh, see this church there, and they do some actions in order uh, to uh, liquidate it uh, in Crimea. So uh, in some cases, there is direct actions of, uh, um, for example, uh, the seizure of uh, um, church in Sevastopol, and the seizure of some premises in Sephiropol. And this is the direct result of the actions of power. They were not afraid of leaving some traces. And the seizure of the church in Perevalne, and I would like to tell you more about this seizure. And you, uh, there is an answer of the, uh, from the Ministry of uh, Defense of Russian Federation uh, on the request of the, um, request of the uh, Ukrainian church. And they confirmed that uh, the church in Sevastopol and the church in Perevalne, they were seized by Russian power. And the second, so uh, they speak about it carefully, and they say you may continue to serve there. But for this, you need to have three things. First, you should re-register according to the legislation of Russian Federation. Next, to get uh, agreement with the Federal Security Service, and you should conclude uh, the contract with the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation. So, uh, to, in order, uh, so we should compare with the, the situation with the uh, Church of Moscow uh, Patriarchate, uh, whether this church corresponds to these requirements. And also, they said that in, uh, church in Perevalna is provided to Moscow Patriarchate. Uh, uh, it was done at that time. And these are not my words, these are not the words of uh, Bishop Clement. This is was said by the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation. Practically, the most interesting thing and the most unclear thing, whether Moscow Patriarchy Church was re-registered. Yes, it underwent registration, and there is a document about this about the re registration in Crimea according uh, to Russian legislation. Second issue, uh, when uh, Perivalne ch um, village church was provided to Moscow Patriarchate, so how this issue was resolved? Uh, so uh, they had some requirements to Moscow Patriarchate Church and some requirements to uh, Kievan Patriarchate Church. And here you may see the agreement concluded between the ad administration uh, of uh, 
uh, the uh, city between and uh, the ministry um, and uh, the uh, concerning uh, the upbringing of Russian servicemen in the spirit of patriotism. And you may see this uh, agreement, this document here. We do not know about the federal um, security service. Maybe they didn't have this coordination with them. But uh, um, the, the position of the Ministry of Russian Federation, the position of uh, uh, the Moscow Patriarchate, and the position of uh, Archbishop Clement, and he holds this posi uh, his position for more than four years, and it shows that Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Kiev and Patriarchate in Crimea, uh, in the view of uh, uh, the Russian authorities, believe that uh, this church is not appropriate. But at the, you remember that in March uh, 2014, Kiev and Patriarchate was uh, 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 condemning the aggression of Russian Federation and call on to protect uh, the uh, integrity of Ukraine and uh, the, we have uh, this declaration uh, by Patriarchy and in our research and uh, it is also present on the side and uh, those requirements that were established by Russian Federation in order that the search continue its existence. Uh, uh, it, uh, they do not correspond this position. And now, practically, Kiev and Patriarchate cannot conclude the agreement with the Ministry of Russian Federation, and we understand that it cannot be done under any conditions, and it cannot be re-registered, and it resulted uh, in the fact that um, according to Russian legislation, Kiev and Patriarchate is not a legal person, and they cannot conclude any legal agreements. They cannot open account in the bank. And I know that the Archbishop had the problem to pay state duty uh, to file the case uh, to the court. Also, I would like to add that all the situation uh, it won't remain here. It will go to the European Court on Human Rights, and one case was uh, sent to the European, was filed to the European Court, and it awaits its time. And about the international law um, and international humanitarian law. Uh, what Russia, Russian Federation did with the religious communities, how it treats uh, uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Kiev and Patriarchate, um, it does not. This treatment does not correspond uh, uh, international legislation on human rights, and also this is one of the elements of discrimination based on. Uh, national grounds and uh, also uh, uh, the, re the religious component here may also be included into the um, national identity issue. That is one of the elements that uh, remained important for Ukrainians in Crimea, for those people who identified themselves with Ukraine. Uh, so uh, please uh, study this research. And uh, the main th uh, in this report are the documents. And you can reach your own conclusions based on these documents. Thank you, Sergei. So despite the fact that occupation authority covers its actions by Russian legislation, uh, we understand that they violate international legislation, the Convention on Human Rights and the uh, Main Freedoms Geneva Conventions and Declaration on liquidation of all forms of discrimination based on religious uh, beliefs and uh, uh, pacts on uh, um, uh, freedoms and rights and other documents that protect hu uh, human rights on international level. 
and we are convinced that the work of the experts that was reflected in this uh, research, this is the part of efficient and important mechanism in fighting the occupants in order to draw attention to human rights violations that are ongoing in the occupied peninsula. Thank you. Now, questions, please. Please introduce yourself first. Lisa Galavata, Fifth Channel. I have a question to Bishop Clement. Taking into account that you met uh, Vladimir Balakh uh, recently, the political prisoner, and he said that he ends uh, his hunger strike. Please tell us about uh, uh, his uh, health condition. Maybe you know. Maybe there is a system uh, for him to go in out uh, of this hunger strike. And uh, I read his letter, and I was really concerned but that it looked like um, uh, like his will. So please tell us about the meeting in Simferopol facility and uh, about his health condition and everything that you know now about Vladimir Balov. And also another um, about, um, question. Uh, what is the language for the service in Crimea? And do you know uh, the number of people who attend those services in your churches? I would like to start with the second question because this is about our topic. So all the services are in Ukrainian in Crimea and uh, uh, also we have uh, uh, such uh, uh, we also pray for our army, for our uh, power and uh, people uh, during services, people uh, come to church in embroidered national shirts, and uh, uh, we didn't change anything, but we reduced the number of services about people. Uh, so uh, people go to the church regularly. I won't say that the number decreased. For example, in Simferopol, part of people uh, went to the mainland Ukraine, but other people, other Ukrainians started to go to church. Those Ukrainians who really care, who are who believe that Ukraine is their motherland, and also I would like to say that uh, uh, many Russian-speaking uh, people come to church, go to church. They are, uh, they feel that they are Ukrainians in spirit, no, not by ethnicity. Um, thank God we have services. Uh, thank God the church can be the participant of those events that now ongoing. And these are the court hearings, and uh, thank God uh, I had the meetings uh, not only with Vladimir Balakh and Evgeny Panov. Now we carry out some work in order to meet with other political prisoners. And about Vladimir, you know that in uh, February, Rostolinsky military court appointed me the uh, uh, defender, and uh, I uh, could use my right as a um, uh, human rights defender. And from the moment of uh, introduction of uh, uh, um, the um, uh, provision. I now do not have the right to carry out this activity, but I had the meeting with the Vladimir, and I saw that his face was, was gray and dry, and the letter that was made public today, this is the mild version, uh, and uh, compared with what we had during our discussions. And his thoughts are much more rigid. Thank God that during that he is now 
trying to stop hunger strike. And uh, I do not know how he will do this, because the week, the last week, I tried to meet with doctors, independent ones, whom I trust, who I know, and with whom I spoke, and I hoped that they will be able to provide professional medical help. Moreover, this was legal, and the lawyer, lawyers prepared some requests, and this was done under control of the lawyers and in coordination with the, um, with the authorities of the prison. So there should be a lawyer, and Vladimir put some conditions um, in order to uh, have uh, this doctor. And uh, I addressed five people, and uh, they rejected the idea of meeting with him. They said that they have their own, uh, they hold positions, and they are afraid of losing their uh, positions. So we spoke with Vladimir. And the only thing I could tell him uh, how the uh, how the priest come out of the fast uh, how and this was the only thing uh, how I could support him to provide some help to him. Uh, so I uh, uh, prayed for him. And uh, also, we looked at each other for a long time, and we uh, came down the stairs, and I went to the yard, and Vladimir was, was taken to the side of the cells, and this was the end of our meeting. Raman Kaha. Do you expect the increase of persecutions after Thomas is provided? I believe that this can happen, and we should pay special attention to this. When you see the documents that we made public, first letter is the letter that was written uh, by Strelkov uh, on the 22nd of March uh, 2014. We didn't know who is, it was Strelkov and Girkin, and uh, uh, I had the meeting, uh, and, and, uh, I, uh, uh, and I said that I address Kirill, and uh, and uh, who is no, uh, who is the patriarch of Moscow? And I said that if someone takes the church or the community, uh, so uh, this was on the 21st of March, 2014, and he called me and he said that he is the um, advisor of Aksyona on security, and there was an, a requirement from him that I should write a petition that the issues between the new power and the church are resolved, and uh, I do not have any claims, and that I'm happy that uh, uh, Kivan Patrykate in the territory of Crimea will be preserved. But I didn't provide any uh, applications, any claims, and um, the same day, I got a letter from him. And later, you know that I had two meetings with Aksyonov. They happened in the critical moments when there was deterioration of the situation. And uh, there was the threat of the uh, um, for the church in Simferopol. And during one of the meetings, uh, they said that uh, Bishop uh, Lazarus said that uh, they shouldn't uh, uh, do something against you because if uh, there will be some actions against the Kievan Patriarchate, this can uh, result in a bad situation for Moscow Patriarchate in the mainland of Ukraine. But you know how these, uh, uh, what happened next. So uh, after Thomas is granted, uh, only God will help, and uh, 
uh, we understand that uh, there, there, there can be some more rigid actions against uh, the Church of Kievan Patriarchate after uh, uh, Thomas is granted. But we hope that these clouds will go away. But there is such a threat, and I understand this. Irina Shevchenko, Liganet. Tell us, please, about Vladimir Balach. You've said that his letter is a mild version, and the, the situation is more rigid. Uh, is it about his health or anything else? Yes, this is about his health because we didn't get the answer what is going on with him. Uh, Volodya uh, told me about his problems with his heart, but he uh, got, uh, he uh, used a lot of painkiller uh, pills. And then there was a more private conversation, and Volodya complained about the uh, stomach cake and uh, that uh, he uh, has uh, the problems with uh, um, uh, vomiting and there were some symptoms uh, and uh, the doctor was informed about everything that uh, is going on with uh, Vladimir, and uh, the doctor says that uh, maybe this is an ulcer uh, or some problems with his stomach, or uh, maybe even uh, um, um, uh, the symptoms, they may be uh, connected with the state uh, of his heart. This may be his uh, heart or his uh, star, uh, his heart or his stomach, or the um, it may be ulcer or uh, so uh, when Volodya is in the detention facility, he will be placed in the hospital or he may be brought out of the prison as it was with Alexin. So in order to verify, to check his health condition. So his health condition is really critical about his psychological status. If we take all, uh, uh, so I spoke with uh, many prisoners and they are all on the brink of uh, psychological breakdown. So for Volodya, the situation was easier because there was access. And uh, to Evgen Panov, I had only four visits to, uh, with, uh, to him. And uh, this was enough uh, to uh, improve his psychological condition. With Volodya, we spoke more because the documents allowed. Uh, me to stay with him for the whole day. So uh, during the first part of the day, he was really irritated, he was really emotional, and he uh, spoke about everything. And the second part of the day, we spoke uh, about any topics, about uh, life, about uh, uh, art, about uh, religion, policy in Ukraine, and the sense of life, why life is given to us. And we touched upon the topic of life and death, because uh, uh, a person can die and be, become a hero for three days. But the other thing is to continue the struggle, not in the conditions you uh, and the life is given to ha have the struggle. And this helped he, him uh, to um, reject this idea of death. And uh, um, the situation was really difficult. And uh, uh, the, this letter is the light version, and the situation is really hard. You should understand that people, they are on the brink of breakdown. They are just on the brink of breakdown. So. What supports Vladimir? Uh, this is the uh, belief in God, and uh, he really trusts uh, 
God and he uh, reads Bible and in Razdulinsky facility I provided him with the uh, religious uh, texts and um, also Vladimir when he was in Razdolinsky facility he had the opportunity to get books in Ukrainian and Natalia his wife provided him with these books uh, there was no censorship and he had the opportunity to read in Ukrainian Ukrainian books that he wanted to read and the rest of the prisoners they didn't have this opportunity and I would like to say that even Volodya read and he uh, think about his life, but his condition is really heavy. Psychologically, it is really difficult to be there, but he is strong um, both physically and uh, psychologically. He understands what life is and what death is. So we spoke openly about it with him. Uh, UA Crimea. Uh, so the question to the lawyer, what is the status of Crimean churches of Kiev and Patriarchate and uh, the number of cases that are heard in the Crimean courts? I didn't understand your question. So the churches, they exist as they existed before. What about their status, if we are speaking about Russian legislation, whether they are registered and how many cases are uh, heard in the Russian courts? So about the property, four or five cases. Some of them ended. About the status, once again, Kiev and Patriarchate was not re-registered in Crimea. So I do not remember exactly. You may look the look up this information in our research, and there is a citation from the decision of one of the Crimean courts, and it says that uh, it was not re-registered, but. Uh, they are um, they are registered according to Ukrainian legislation. Uh, they may be foreign, but legal person. If we are speaking legally, and if we are speaking in simple language, uh, Ukrainian Kievan Patriarchate continues uh, its existence. No one. Uh, so so. Uh, even someone wants to harm them. Uh, one tries to do this, um, they may address the court, they may file the case, and uh, um, maybe there can be decisions taken by the court, maybe may the positive decision, and uh, uh, the, uh, so, so it can be uh, protected by the court. So. Uh, other cases when the people who go to church are attended by some law enforcers, maybe they do not recommend people to uh, go to this church. They, there were no direct uh, addresses to people, but in 2014 there were some cases, but uh, these people were uh, revealed, they just came to the church and they just sat in the church and uh, uh, we told we told them uh, what their place is and they just quickly left and uh, there were some moments that were not completely pleasant but we could monitor them. Then there was a meeting with some priest. I revealed him. He wrote an explanatory note for me. He wrote with whom and uh, where he met and uh, uh, 
and what they were talking about. So uh, Maxim Volovnin, he left the Crimea and they tried to recruit him. And his letter, his four-page letter, this uh, um, letter is preserved about trying to cooperate. So there were such attempts in 2014 and at the beginning of 2015 when uh, Ruslan Belbek, he was the vice premier and uh, he was dealing with the issues of uh, inter-ethnical and inter-religious uh, union and uh, he asked me to go to Moscow with him and uh, uh, we met in the, uh, uh, in the office of the Russian president to discuss the issues concerning uh, our stay in Crimea, and they were ready to pay for the air ticket and to uh, provide us with a car. And uh, there were three such uh, meetings, and uh, I fell ill. Once and I went to t uh, t two times uh, to Kiev and uh, in, to our patriarchate, and then I went back to Crimea. And after that time, once again there was a serious meeting. At the, there was a meeting with Ruslan Belibek. At this meeting, they there were rep representatives. Uh, from Chechnya. I do not remember the name. Uh, so um, the, the uh, name was Russian, and uh, Ruslan, uh, uh, Ruslan Bilbek tried to speak with me um, uh, in a not polite manner. It happened in winter 2015, and I had the problems with the premises, and the first there were first attempts to seize our pre premises, and Ruslan Bilbek started to speak with me not politely, and when I went back to church during the service, I uh, said that they should not speak with me like that in a rigid tone, and uh, it uh, uh, was put on the internet, and someone revealed this uh, on the internet, and my attitude to the Russian power was revealed. But no one uh, was speaking with me after that, and no one was trying to speak with me or my priests. Uh, one more interesting fact that happened two weeks ago uh, the, uh, f from Razdolne. Uh, regional department of police, we had a letter and it said that they asked according to the law, according to the law on police of Russian Federation and on the criminal investigation, they asked to provide all statute documents uh, of registration and to provide the list of the founders and the, to provide the list of participants of a religious community with, for, to provide an answer about your attitude to the problems of family and upbringing. And uh, one more question, whether there is some pressure on your pressure on your community. And uh, this letter came, and the lawyers studied this letter, and they said that I may not provide answer to these questions, because it does not say based on what they demand such data. So two laws mentioned, they do not demand such data. Uh, this can be done only in case of the criminal case. And also, it doesn't say uh, the deadline for the answer. So uh, according to uh, legislation, I didn't provide the answer. So these are the elements of our life. And I believe that we are monitored. I believe that there are some people who may provide some information. 
But also interesting, an interesting fact that happened in 2014 when they tried to seize the land half a hectare near a Ukrainian gymnasium. And uh, they sent a letter that they take this land for FSB premises. And I wrote to FSB and I said I won't give this land to them. Then I tried to uh, go and see the head of uh, FSB in Crimea, but they didn't let me. And then they provided me with the letter that uh, those issues you've raised, uh, they are not in the competence of FSB because this issue of land, this is the responsibility of local government. So I just laughed. It was in 2014, and SBU wrote the same letter to me, letters to me. So uh, this, uh, they also didn't interfere and didn't accept anything. So I can mention such things. Every, uh, so uh, summing up uh, our results. So you can just analyze this information we provide. So FSB officials didn't, I didn't meet with them. They didn't propose anything. So in order to propose something, uh, they should provide guarantees. If they do not provide, uh, if they do not agree, if you do not agree with them, so uh, you, uh, you uh, they won't um, deal with you. One more important aspect. I got information from another source, and uh, this is about the priest uh, from Sevastopol, uh, from the church that was in the um, military compound. So Sergei will tell us about this case. Briefly speaking, after this church in the ter territory of military compound was seized, and maybe you remember, uh, the picture of uh, Putin with the air conditioner. This is in the same region. So the priest continued the service in his house, and then they had a talk with him, some people in civilian clothes. But it was connected with this interference. And then, what we may say, it happened after the law uh, of Yerovoy was adopted, people in civilian clothes came because those who are your neighbors, they should provide information to the law enforcement bodies about their neighbors. So this was a, a Yerovoy uh, law in action. Evgen Salonina, Radio Liberty, I have a question to Archbishop Clement. Can you sum up briefly uh, the scale and in what premises the services are held. So you said about nine premises, and what are they? How many people come to service? First of all, we should understand, and I said it in the beginning, so these premises are in the Crimean uh, Church Authority. And uh, I uh, um, and this, I, I uh, registered it, and uh, everything that that was leased, everything that was provided by businessmen. For example, in case of Saki, uh, the businessmen provided us with the premise on the territory of uh, sanitarium, but then the owner changed the situation, changed, and they asked us to leave this premises. And there is a document that the church is not there anymore. So what we have, this is the cathedral in Simferopol, more than 1,000 square meters. This is the church, the cathedral that consists of three floors, first floor, the cultural uh, center and the management of uh, Patrick, uh, and the second, um, the big cathedral, uh, uh, six and a half meters high and uh, 
uh, the, these are the big holes that uh, we transformed into the service rooms. And also there is summer uh, church and winter church, small churches and the holes, because in the winter it's easier to heat. This is in Simferopol and in Pretoria. A wooden church that we started to build before on the eve of Maidan. You remember that some people tried to commit an arson, and in 2014 we uh, constructed it and put a roof on it, and now. Uh, we have uh, services on Sundays, and also the search is open throughout the week. There is a person uh, there in, in order that uh, uh, people could come. Also, the church preserved in Perevalne village, but these churches that were built uh, in the Dutch land plots very well now one in the military lands and two churches, one on private premises and one on the land plot. And you have Patori, a stable number of people, up to 30 people during service, 30, 50 people during service. In Severopol, 100, 150. In Perivalna, somewhat less, 10, 15 people. Also, male monastery in Belogorsky region, Balki village. There, there is a house that was transformed in a church and in summer 2013. We uh, were able to provide the foundation for the construction of the church, but we stopped any construction because Patrick said, for whom should we build, build that? That's why there is no construction now. We just preserve what we have about the central part of Crimea. And uh, for churches uh, in the North Razdolinsky region, three churches in Razdolinsky region and Pervomaisky region. In Razdolinsky region, more people go to church in Pervomaisky region, less people go to church. And here the situation is like this. Twenty years ago, we opened churches and they were in IDP's uh, villages and people uh, Came, uh, the, and these people the, were 60, and now they are 70, 75, and the young people uh, went away. So people get older, number of people is getting smaller, and those northern parishes that we have, uh, they are, uh, they have uh, their own priests, they have their income. So the work is done. It is organized in a good way. And uh, they have services. And it's not difficult for people to support the priest. And the priest have time to um, provide services and to also go to mainland Ukraine. And uh, thank God uh, we have uh, some stability. You should understand that for people, it is critical to preserve the Church of Kiev and Patriarchate. For them, it is really important that these churches are active because this is the only place where they can meet and speak Ukrainian. They sing Ukrainian songs during the service when uh, th there is such time when they can sing and speak, and they can resolve their issues of movement, and uh, um, they communicate with other people about the travel to mainland. So this is the important point to resolve the issues. And you shouldn't forget that when people come to me and ask for legal help, They have the opportunity to get consultations in Khersonsky Oblast. 
I try to answer those questions that they have, those citizens that are in Crimea and cannot go to the mainland Ukraine, and they should resolve some legal issues. So the church tries to help them to resolve these legal issues. Thank you, dear colleagues. Uh, our time is up. You can put your questions off records. Thank you. Thank you very much for your support. Also, I would like to thank, on behalf of our guys, Vivian Panovi, Valodya Baloch, for the support that you provide, your information support. Because uh, if uh, you won't write about it, if you won't speak about them, uh, the state of health and psychological status will become worse. Because when a person is in prison, if this person does not have information, they believe that everyone forgets about them. So um, this is about all of our guys, because uh, uh, the conditions of the prison, they influence like this. That's why I really thank you, and please continue to provide news about them. I would like to thank to Sergei and Alexander, uh, because for many years they have been supporting Crimean um, uh, branch of Ukraine Orthodox Church of Kiev Patriarch Kate. And uh, without them, uh, it would be impo impossible not to make mistakes. And that's why I would like to thank the team. And I would like to thank uh, the Patrick. Uh, that he really helps me uh, to uh, remain in the legal area and not to break some rules. Thank you very much, dear colleagues.